Who is the most delusional person you've known? I work in a small town radio station. I've seen a lot of rookies fresh out of broadcast school let the tiny amount of fame they get from being on a small town radio station go to their head. This one guy came into work one day, madder than hell that small town radio famous wasn't enough to get him out of a speeding ticket. My brother was always bragging about how chicks he worked with wanted to bang him. Then after two or three months when he inevitably quit or got fired, whenever the guys were talking about chicks they hooked up with, he would always talk about these beautiful women that wanted him, which he just never got around to hooking up with. One time after starting a new job, he comes home all excited and yells, Holy crap, the receptionist at this place is gorgeous and guess what? She wants to F me. I said, Dude, you've been there one day. How do you know she wants to F you? So he says, Well, I just walked through the front door, and as I was passing by, she looks me dead in the eye and says, Good morning. Oh my god, I lost it with that last bit. Good morning equals she wants to bang me? That's the most delusional thing I've ever heard. My current boss. He thinks the business is doing okay or is in a rough spot. He's slowly choking and killing it with his managing. I see the shop closing in mid to late August. Won't you feel stupid when it closes in early September? Seriously, though, I hope he turns it around quick and that you don't lose your job. And if you do, I hope you find something quickly. Worked a night job where I met someone who was studying rather than going to school. Eventually, I got out of him that he was studying to be a seducer. He studied Cleopatra, Rasputin, Casanova, etc. to learn the art of seduction. Basically, this guy's life plan was to just seduce his way through life. He had an intricate plan on how he was going to seduce our supervisor for a raise, seduce multiple spouses to support him, even how to get free coffee by seducing the barista. He must have done a lot of seducing to keep working that barely over minimum wage night job for years. Sounds like he put his buy into charisma and his dump stat is intelligence. Ah, the charismatic idiot savant playthrough of life. Sounds like this man was trying to go for a path of life that would have got him into the Gold Diggers video we did a few weeks ago. Better luck next time, failed social climber. My aunt, as in my mum's sister. She constantly stirs drama with other people and then calls you out for being mean to her. What the frick, lady? For example, one time I came outside and I see her pull up in her car. She starts chit-chatting to my mum. They're talking about her haircut. I tell my mum we needed to go and she drove away shortly after. Totally fine. I get a call from another relative a week later that she's angry with me because the day she came over I rolled my eyes and she reads lips. She knows I said something about her. This didn't happen. She then continues to post on social media how karma is going to get me, while simultaneously commenting on all of my stuff, saying how cute my daughter is. Delusion. This is my aunt exactly. She's also a drama queen. I visit my family once a year for a week, so I go to see my aunt and my mom at the same time. Every year, my aunt will cause some drama. This year, she launched into a casual conversation with me and just said, You know your boyfriend kinda looks like a rat? Told her that's not an okay thing to say. She said the truth hurts to hear. I got angry and left. Next morning, she waltzes in like nothing happened. Asks me to come and give her a hug hello. I say no, explaining that what she said was really hurtful. She then flips her crap and starts screaming, Why are you always starting stuff up like this? We never get into fights when you're not here. You're always causing trouble. I was so shocked. I just left. A very, very good friend of mine comes from a super rich family. His dad recently brought a million dollar home to sell to him for under 300000 He thinks his family isn't that wealthy and that this isn't that abnormal. There's always been a number of Ask Reddit threads like who's the richest person you know, and they're always fascinating reading. There are people like your friend who have no idea that it's not normal to be able to buy a million dollar home or a yacht without blinking. One of my favorite comments was about a clueless girl from a very rich family who visited an equally rich friend. Friend's daddy had just bought her a huge, gorgeous penthouse apartment in Manhattan. Clueless friend looked around the place and said, Wow, this is really nice. How much do you think the rent here would be? $1,000 a month? Then she looked confused when the guy who wrote the story, who wasn't rich, started laughing. I mean, it's a banana, Michael. What would it cost? $10? For those wondering, penthouse rent in Manhattan is probably somewhere around 15 k per month. My little sister. Me and my eldest sister were raised by an alcoholic mother who left us with random people so she could get drunk. When I was about six, my mum sobered up and had my little sister. The girl is delusional and has adopted the idea that she went through what me and my older sister went through. She recalls memories that never happened. She swears my mum beat her. Never happened. 
She makes up stories like she was a mortician, traveled around the world, she dated such and such, and had tons of money. It's so weird. She spends every waking moment on Facebook and posts every single thing that goes on in her life. She has a felony, she beat her baby daddy until they broke up, and now both of those psychos have really crappy custody fights going on. I could go on and on. Sounds like a compulsive liar. I dated one of those. Frick all that. My schizophrenic uncle. He ran away from home in the US in his teens to Turkey, converted to Islam, came home a few years later, believed he was the son of God and robbed a bank so that he could give the money to the homeless in the city we live in. He was institutionalized for many years and was released one day with no notice to our family, and died shortly thereafter of an accident caused by his mental illness. Well, I can't fault his intentions. This dude who used to live near me. There's a laundry list of stories, but two gems are when he took those fake billion dollar bills you can get at Halloween from church groups to Walmart, filled eight shopping carts with random expensive stuff, mostly electronics, and tried to buy them with the, quote, money. Or when, after the cops were called on him for shooting our much younger brother with an airsoft gun, he grabbed a samurai sword and charged at the cops. Spoiler alert, he got tased. He later told us if they shot at him, he would cut the bullets in half, like Ryan Reynolds did in X-Men Origins Wolverine. That dude is lucky he didn't get shot. I realize the dude was probably white. That said, getting shot by the police can happen to anyone, and if you try to attack a police officer with a potentially lethal weapon, you can reasonably expect for it to happen to you. The cops understood that their bullets were of no use in the situation. He had been studying the blade since he was but a child. My ex-boyfriend plays the victim to his friends and family, yet I've spoken to two of his exes and we've all called the cops on him at some point. He obsesses and stalks and plays weird games. He tried to break into my apartment once after we broke up to apologize to me and tried to convince my roommate I was unstable and making rash choices. We've been broken up seven months now. I have a new boyfriend and he still sends me emails saying I'm being unreasonable. This reminds me of my uncle. Three out of four of his wives have literally fled from him in the dead of night. One of them took their daughter and sought asylum in Germany, where her mother was a citizen. He's a criminal and a sociopath, but neither he nor my grandparents see it. Some years ago, my grandfather had to get triple bypass surgery. There were some complications. He was in the hospital for months, and no one knew if he was ever going to make it out again. When he finally did, he discovered that the same uncle had stolen over $1 million from him over the months he was in hospice. Did my grandfather finally see him for what he was? Nope. He blamed my uncle's most recent ex-wife, calling her the criminal mastermind. She was the stupidest woman I've ever met, but at least she was smart enough to get away from him. Met a guy in the psych ward with psychosis who believed that he was a prophet. Really nice guy. I have a quote written by him. Madness is not pure error. It is nature's dissatisfaction with genius. My grandmother was a psych nurse in a ward years ago, and she encountered a patient who was convinced he was the second coming of Jesus. He even walked like Jesus. She said, if I hadn't known he was nuts, I might have believed him. Back in the day when mental health experiments were just doctors saying, I wonder what happens when we combine these specific types of crazy people. There was a case where doctors put three second coming of Jesus guys together to see what would happen. Anticlimactically, each of the three merely thought the other two were poor, deluded souls. I wanted them to merge into one super prophet. We are three sus. I would like to thank everyone who combined their stories into that last exchange. The humor can be hard to come by in scripts about the mentally ill or deluded. I spent the first 11 months of my army career with this one guy who had absolutely no idea that everybody hated him. He had this horrible personality where he talked too loud, said frick all the time, stole crap, and fricked with other people's stuff, and just seemed kind of like an alien trying to mimic heterosexual male interactions. But the alien had only studied bad sports movies and war films. He was incredibly cringy. Guy was raised by a single mother that clearly allowed him to get away with anything, and in 11 months I knew him, I never once heard him take responsibility for anything. An example, we'll call him PH for dialogue purposes. We're in the lunch line and he gets a big bowl of clam chowder soup, he spills a little over the side of the bowl and onto the tray, and we're like, Ah, looks like you spilled a bit. Keep in mind, we saw him spill it. PH? No, I didn't spill it. Well, who spilled it then? Frick, I don't frickin' know. I guess someone frickin' knocked me and made the bowl spill. As I said, he swore all the time. You know you swear too much when a bunch of army dudes think you swear too much. Yeah, literally couldn't take responsibility for spilling a little bit of soup in a tray. 
As said, though, the most delusional aspect of his personality was his complete inability to accept that nobody liked him. When our final course, combat engineer training, finished, and we were all about to get posted off to our respective units and bases across the country, he'd always talk about how he was going to hang with the people who were going to the same place as him and maybe be roommates with one of them. To a man, each one of them never wanted to see him ever again. It took on average about two weeks from the point of meeting him to completely despise him, and he was never once aware or willing to admit this. As said by one of our sergeants at the end of our course, at the course party, that kid's a frickin' lunatic. Couldn't have said it better myself. Are you talking about Sterling Archer? Isn't it funny how we all love Archer, but if he were real and we were friends with him, we would just think he's a pathetic idiot. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. My cousin has insisted to my family that I get exercised because I'm gay and autistic. She thinks that only the devil himself can corrupt someone to my extent. The problems with her theory are that I'm neither gay nor autistic, and she's the one touched by Satan. This reminds me of that Yahoo Answers post where someone said his mom made him wear a butt plug at all times when he was five or Satan would violate him and make him gay. That's nowhere near as bad as that Facebook trend where moms would give their wee kids bleach enemas and then point at the shredded colon lining and say, look at that big worm that came out of him. That's what caused his autism. People are effed. Guy at my college thought he was God's gift to women just because he worked out daily. He looked more like an albino Dwayne Johnson with curly hair. It was like Casper took roids and started hitting on anything that moved. That last sentence made me really feel like I could hate him and be justified in doing so. I love unrepentant buttholes that I can take out all of the rage I have stored up from my day-to-day -day life on. Mine is my boyfriend's best friend in the whole world and he's a frickin' nutter. Sometimes it's funny to hear him explain his theories, but other times it's sad and frustrating. I care about him, but often worry that he may be mentally ill. A few examples. That the Earth is flat and that NASA and all the other scientists are in on the secret and want to keep it from the public. They don't want us to know because it somehow directly proves God's existence, and they don't want that. All ice cream starts as vanilla ice cream until you add flavors to it. He thinks the absence of added flavor is vanilla. The government uses airplanes to spray us all with metal particles that makes people have autism. Also related, he doesn't believe that regular clouds are made out of water vapor. He thinks that semen never leave the female body after people do the deed and that it collects in the uterus somewhere. If a woman does the deed with multiple men over the course of her life, then her child will genetically be a mixture of all those men. This is why he thinks God wants us to only do the deed with our husband or wife. Do I even need to keep going? Okay then, prior to his flat earth theory where he believed in space and NASA and whatnot, he saw a photo of what looked like the claw or hand of a Jurassic Park dinosaur in the corner of a photo taken from Mars. This was clearly a clickbait bullcrap internet photo, but he believed it to be real. He said, I think they got the whole creature on camera, but they're just showing a hand so that we don't all freak out at once. He told me that he thought keto diet was just fat. Yes, you heard that right, just fat. I told him that's borderline impossible because if you were to eat just fat, you'd essentially just be eating olive oil and butter. So not only would you crap your brains out, you'd also never get any vitamins or nutrients, which you need to live. He didn't understand. In a religious debate, how can you prove that Christianity is the religion of truth if every other religion believes it is the truth, I told him it isn't solid evidence to use the Bible, because most religions have their own sacred scriptures that refute the Bible. If everyone believes their book, using yours won't make a difference. He told me I was being hormonal, and that's why I didn't see eye to eye with him. Are you satisfied yet? Alright, a few more because it feels great to get a chance to share some of these. He recently informed me that God taught him that watering your grass will make it green. I told him that that was just standard lawn maintenance and general knowledge, but he argued that only those who know the Lord take the time to water their lawns. He doesn't understand what door-to-door -door salesmen are. One was at his house asking his grandfather, the homeowner, for some info to complete an order he was making. He wanted his name, phone number, and the exact address. My friend thought it was incredibly suspicious that he just showed up, even though the guy had on a uniform and a marked vehicle, so he called the cops, who were very confused when they arrived. He firmly believes that fat people are fat because of cake. Not trans fats, not excess sugar, not hidden calories and misleading portion sizes, just cake. If you try to pry further, he'll explain that there's there's nowhere you can go where you can't buy some form of cake. It's delicious and horrible for you. That's why people are so fat. Because cake is too yummy and too easy to get. 
When I tried to tell him that in that way he's right, but it's more of an issue of junk food rather than just the cake, he said, You wouldn't know because you've never been fat. I have, so I would know. We'll end this with my boyfriend's favorite. He thinks that the birds outside his window are watching him. Keep in mind, his house is two floors and he's on the second floor, which is right at eye level with the tree in the front yard, which has a huge bird feeder. And yet he thinks that for whatever reason, these birds are obsessed with him and watch him 24-7. I can't decide if I want to watch nothing but this man's life on TV or if I've already heard way too much about him. This is why you need to get off the internet and go outside from time to time, people. After this video, of course. It's the vanilla ice cream part of the story that's really bothering me. It makes sense to someone who just barely understands language and flavors because we use vanilla to describe something that's plain. But really, it's not that hard to look up the actual plant it comes from, so they're not only operating on extremely basic understandings, they're clearly refusing to even attempt to enhance it. My little sister, who somehow got it into her head that we grew up in the ghetto. We didn't. And that it is okay to just keep popping out kids with different baby daddies because if God didn't want me to have babies, he wouldn't let me get pregnant. Oh my freaking god, I want to hit her in the face every time she says something like this. By the way, she's now pregnant with her fifth child, right after being a complete hypocrite when she got pregnant last year and had a termination because she wanted a girl. She's finally having her girl, so hopefully she stops. And before I get a bunch of angry messages, she lives off the government. Baby daddies do not support their kids, so she brags about being a hustler. My uncle decided his thoughts were so profound, he tried selling printed canvases with some of his quotes on them. Yes, sentences he came up with himself. And no, he's not successful or any sort of leader in his field, nor anything that would warrant quoting or displaying anything he's ever said. He also decided to write a book of his life, of which he's achieved sucking my auntie dry of money and contact with her family because none of us want to be around him. Spiritually pious and delusions of grandeur. My father. The man does not live in the same reality as the rest of us. He's almost 60 and thinks he's going to make it in the music business, despite the fact that he has no band and plays no gigs. He's a passable guitar player, but the typical guy that had a band in the 70s and early 80s. Takes himself way too seriously as if he's some kind of prolific musician. He took some mediocre pictures of the band Genesis in the 80s and has called himself a photographer since then. He built himself and a couple of friends some very primitive websites and calls himself a web designer. He took a as in one, class on sound engineering at the community college in like 1980 and calls himself a sound engineer. He even has a couple of video cameras and knows the basics of video editing and now bills himself as a videographer for local bands. The man just makes crap up to make himself seem important. He hasn't had an actual job in 13 years. He's been self-employed in that time, but you need to have actual clients and stuff. He thinks he's above everyone, the smartest guy in the room, and he's just this grand person. It's ridiculous. I don't know how his wife puts up with it. An ex-friend of mine cried multiple times because she thought guys were only interested in me and not her, and that I must be doing something insane to attract their attention since she's the skinnier and more obsessed with her looks one. My guess, her personality was probably repulsive after two weeks tops. I'm guessing she was clingy too. She probably also wasn't nearly as attractive as she thought she was and confused skinny with heart. Definitely my uncle. He claims to be the descendant of some wealthy noble family from Germany and goes around genealogy websites adding himself and my grandmother to said family, claiming she's a princess. Not my dad, though. He doesn't count. This is only the latest one. He's also pretended to be a priest and a diplomat at some point, as well as having several diseases, so he could get money, sympathy from people, and heavy prescription drugs. HIV, melanoma, Parkinson's, the list goes on. We tried having him admitted, but he always gets discharged a day or two later, since he's very good at convincing everyone that he's fine and that it's us who wants him out of the picture. Man, I thought most of these would be funny, but now I'm kind of sad. It's terrifying to think that people can go their whole lives, their one shot at existence, being so sheltered and afraid. What a bummer. My friend's ex went off her bipolar meds because she was convinced that love was the cure to her bipolar disorder. I feel better now, so that means I don't need my meds anymore. Bipolar isn't a bacterial infection. You don't take meds for a while and then you're cured of it. Weirdly, they broke up after about the millionth violent mood swing, and now she spends her days getting fired from every single job and doing hallucinogenics. Both my aunt and uncle on my mum's side of the family, mum's brother and his wife, my grandmother's health was declining and my uncle fully supported my aunt so she didn't work. Instead of putting my grandmother in a home, they offered to move her into their house so my aunt could take care of her. 
Meanwhile, my mum was in the process of divorcing my dad, selling the house, and working 70 hours a week to keep up at a job she hated. In the midst of all that, my aunt asked if my mum could come over to be with my grandmother on the day she was meeting with the lawyer to finalise her divorce. Mum said she couldn't make it, and my aunt told her that if she really loved her mother, she'd make time and would move her appointment with the lawyer, even though she came to the house every day after work to see her. Finally, my mum admitted to my uncle, her brother, that she was suicidal and wanted a way out. He then proceeded to tell her that she was a horrible person and was useless because she didn't want to help. That was years ago, and no one in my family has said a word to them since. We've all moved on and are very happy without them. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.